All right, guys, Aggie football is back. We got a game versus Mississippi State that once again will have a lot riding on it now that A&M has found themselves on a five-game winning streak on the thick of their highest goals. Everything's still alive for the season, and you got yourself a big one. And I'll be up front with you guys. This is a game that I fully expect Texas A&M to win. I think A&M is just better in pretty much every category than Mississippi State. They're obviously a rebuilding team. A team that's rebuild was triggered by the unfortunate passing of the legend that is Mike Leach. They tried the hire from within. It didn't work out. And now they've landed on offensive mind Jeff Levy to rebuild these Mississippi State Bulldogs. But having said all of that, this is a spot that gets a ton of college football teams. You're coming off of a big win. You have a big game looming the next week at home versus LSU and Kyle Field. You're coming off of a bye week, which in some cases, can mean a sluggish start for some teams. And Mississippi State, it's a team that everyone knows is in a down year, but they actually have a little bit of positive momentum brewing on the offensive side of the ball. So even though this is an opponent where I expect A&M to outclass and take the game running away, it's still just a very, very scary spot to play a team. So let's talk about exactly what we need to see from Texas A&M to continue their upward trajectory on the season that was established the last couple of weeks and how they can avoid the, the huge letdown that a lot of our rivals are hoping for. So guys, make sure you like and subscribe. I'm going to keep putting out Aggie content. And make sure you guys hit the notification bell because these videos are very time sensitive during the year. The videos become irrelevant after the next set of games typically. So make sure you hit that so you don't miss my next video. I appreciate all you guys for being here. Make sure you comment your thoughts on the game. Let's get right into it and start with the Mississippi State offense, which is where they're actually feeling a little bit of excitement and hope for. And, you know, obviously the team's going through a rebuild, but they put up decent numbers in most of their games on the year. They're averaging 381 yards of total offense, 28 points per game with 254 passing per game, 127 rushing yards per game. But what has them feeling really, really good right now is the emergence of true freshman quarterback Michael Van Buren took over the game versus Florida when Blake Shapen went down for the year, and he's done nothing but improve since then. His best game came most recently on the road at UGA, where he passed for 306 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, and was not sacked in the game. He's able to read defenses and get the ball out of his hands pretty quickly and effectively for a quarterback of his age. And he was really able to make the UGA defense pay with several explosive passes on the game. And he's not what you would call a scrambler, but he definitely has the mobility and the athleticism to extend plays and help his offensive line out. And it's a pretty average offensive line. The Mississippi State offensive line has given up 60 pressures and 12 sacks on the year. And their running attack is bottom three in the conference right now. But with how they're going to want to play, spreading you out, taking shots, trying to get a pretty effective wide receiver group involved in the game, and they have a pretty good you know, arsenal of receivers they'll attack with, the Aggie defensive line should absolutely have another chance to impact a game in a really, really big way, building on those last two performances where we saw the most disruptive games from that defensive line on the year. So what I want to see the Aggie defense do is make the young quarterback uncomfortable early in the game. Again, UGA had zero sacks against the guy and 11 pressures on the day. And the quarterback found a ton of success and he got better throughout the course of the game. They played their best football late in the game. So make your presence known early and often. Get him out of the pocket. Don't let him get comfortable. And just to compare the Aggie pass rush to the UGA pass rush, their most recent opponent, A&M has 75 hurries on the year to UGA's 60. A&M has 13 sacks to UGA's 10. All that to say... I think A&M has a chance to be really successful successful in this department, and I'm going to call that my my defensive key to the game, is just making this young quarterback uncomfortable. He's, he's solid, man. He's coming off of an SEC Freshman of the Week performance at UGA. But for that pass rush, what has really helped them out for the Aggies in the last couple of games has been much improved play from the back seven at Texas A&M. Over the last two games, we saw quarterbacks at times have to hold on to the ball longer than they would like giving this Aggie defensive line and pass rush a chance to pin their ears back and get to the quarterback. So they're really playing complimentary football front seven to back seven or back seven to your defensive line, however you want to put it. But secondary is coming along, man. Keep building as a unit. Don't let up. Again, this is a very new defensive back group together for Texas A&M. Bunch of players coming together from other programs across the country. 
bunch of players rising from kind of maybe the red shirt ranks like a Dalton Brooks and getting prominent roles on the year this year. And I think they have a lot of room for improvement over the course of the year. And you can't skip a step here. You have to keep progressing and pick up where you left off the last couple of games. But before we get into the Mississippi State defense that I think A&M can actually have their way with because it's not progressing like the offense has, I want to take a minute to talk about handling success as a team. With A&M's current five-game winning streak and recent big-game performance versus Missouri, the conversation around A&M as a program has shifted. They've kind of gone from the hunter to the hunted, at least in a perception from a perception standpoint. And they'll now have to navigate that new landscape. I mean, they're going to have a target on their back. Teams like Mississippi State, South Carolina, Auburn, all those road games that we look at as manageable but also still losable. Those teams see you as an opportunity now. And you know damn well Mississippi State sees you the same way. And I've been listening to some message board stuff, listening to some of their talking heads, and, and they absolutely believe this is a game that they have a chance in. Now, Let's talk about what happened the last time A&M had a feel-good performance and how they responded to it. It was the Florida game. A&M left us feeling really encouraged about their chances on the year after going to Florida and handling their business, getting over the road hump, establishing a running game, and just comfortably taking the game. They came out the next week versus Bowling Green a little bit flat on both sides of the football. I would argue that the Aggies didn't handle success that well. You started the game with busts in the running game. You gave up too many explosive plays. You let a team that you could have handled stick around and make the game too close for comfort. Now, A&M responded to that scare very well with two much improved defensive performances versus Arkansas and Missouri. And the offense finally followed suit versus Missouri when Connor Wigman came back into the fold. But here you are again, coming off of a feel-good win against a very proud team with nothing to lose. Can you lean on that previous experience and handle business? Or are you doomed to repeat those mistakes? Now, one of the biggest issues in that Bowling Green game was play recognition, pursuit, busts in the back seven of that Aggie defense. This offense at Mississippi State can make you pay if you make those same mistakes. But my take, my opinion, I think Elko is going to let the team know about this. I think this has been part of the discussion. You didn't handle success the best, the first time you really had it on the year and you felt good about yourself, I fully trust this coaching staff to get this team locked in for the task at hand because you're going to have opportunities. And those really start on the offensive side of the ball. Let's get right into Mississippi State's defense, which, unlike the offense, really hasn't progressed much in the year, giving up 605 yards in their most recent game versus UGA. They're giving up the most points in the conference at 33.2 points per game. They give up the most yards per game at 465 as well as the most yards both in the air on the ground, not really having a standout on either department. Guys, this is absolutely a game where A&M can and should dictate their offensive game plan, which leads me right into my number one key in the entire game. Do not turn the ball over. With the offensive progression they've been having, you don't want to give the underdog any extra possessions in the game, any bullets in the chamber to make this a game. Run the damn ball. Run it inside, run it outside, run zone scheme, run gap scheme, run Moss, run Daniels. Run the damn ball and control the possessions in the game. Now, don't get me wrong, I love this Aggie defense. And I think they have a chance to have a lot of success in this game. But you just don't want to give the underdog any extra bullets in that gun to make something happen. And that's their path to hope, their path to victory. They have to score a bunch of points to stay in games with their defensive deficiencies. And I'll end on this point. In the first half versus Texas and the second half versus UGA, that's when Mississippi State made the games interesting. And you know what both of those stretches in both of those games had in common? Turnovers. Versus Texas, the running back Wisner fumbled in the red zone when the game was still close and the game went 6-7 to late in the first half. Now Texas scored a touchdown there, but to start the third quarter, Texas fumbled again. And the game was 6-14 to until late in the third quarter. UGA had the game fully under control up 34-17 to in the third quarter. They're about to take a commanding lead to go up 41-17. But Carson Beck gives them the ball in the end zone. So you go from 41-17 to giving the Mississippi State the ball back. And they found some momentum and made that a close game throughout the rest of the outing. Look, I'm saying all this to say, a just can't give them a chance in the game. 
they absolutely have a chance to impose their will on both sides of the ball. And I actually think they will. I think they win with a score of 38 to 20, covering the now 15.5 point spread. The time is now. You don't want to wait until the big game to play your best. You have to bring your best every single weekend, knowing that this is a conference with a lot of proud teams and a lot of talent. And yes, Mississippi State's in a down year right now, but they are progressing on the offensive side of the ball. Just don't give them a chance. You need to cut through them like a, like a hot knife through butter. Destroy this team. Impose your will. Don't leave the door cracked. All right, guys. Comment your thoughts on the game. Comment your keys to the game. I'm going to go live Thursday night with another preview show to give you guys a chance to call in and give me your score predictions for a chance to enter that Hall of Fame right there. If you get the score prediction right, you'll become immortalized on the channel. That'll be written in Sharpie, and you'll be featured in all my future shows. So make sure you guys call in for a chance to do that. But just comment your thoughts on this game. Am I being a little bit too apprehensive about this, guys? I think we're winning this game. I just want to check every box. I want to bring up everything there is to, to, to highlight about this game, just like we hope the coaching staff and players are doing this work week. So, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. I appreciate you all. I'll see you guys soon. Gig'em.